Hi, here's Chris with a new quick tip video for Blender. Today I show you how to create this interactive shelf. We have two sliders here, a blue one and a red one. When I change the blue one, I can change the amount of boards. And when I change the red slider, then I can change the overall size of my shelf. So let's see how this works. Okay, so let's start and see what we need to create this interactive shelf. Here I have the default scene, the main scene and the elements we need to create this. First we see we have a empty and uh, here another empty and some objects. This here is an object and what you see here are just the, the edges of an uh, object. So what I've done here, I've uh, created a square and I've deleted the faces of the square and what we now see are just some some edges. So this is just for me to to for orientation and and so on. So what we have, we have this scalar here, this uh, element to change the board amount later and then we have the, the element where we create the distance between the boards. And here we have a cube-like object that looks like a board. This is our board. You can see the name here. And this here are the walls. It's an object that I've created here from the board. I've taken or I took here the faces, the side faces. I extruded them and separated them to create this wall. So we have one object that represents the walls. So all this is parented to the main object here, to the root shelf. You can see it in the outliner too. So when I move it, you see everything is moving and everything is uh, related or parented to this object. The same is here. I have this distancer here, this element, this is parented or this here is parented with this element and here you see this one is parented to this. This is what I've prepared. So the, what we do first is we want to use this both elements as a scaling, as a slider. And, as, uh, and if you remember when I shown you the, the shelf, then I was able to, to move this up and down, but it stopped automatically here at the end and started automatically here at the bottom. And so what we have to do now is we have to look how we limit the movement of the slider to, to get a real slider, okay? So to do this, you are using a constraint. So you click on this object and go to the constraints here. And what you add, this is a limit constraint. This is a limit uh, location constraint here, this one. So it's a transform group constraint and it is used the location. So what we want to do is we want to limit the location, the movement of this object. So at the moment, you see, I can move it all around and nothing really changes. So after I've added the limit location constraint, we have some options here. The first one, we want to limit the start point for the Z axis, for the blue one here. So what to do is we go and say we set a minimum. The minimum is zero zero meters here, so the object is already in the zero position. So when I move it up, nothing happens. It will be moved up, but now it stops at zero. You see, it's stopping at zero, at the zero position because we have set to minimum Z of zero. If we would set the limitation to a minus value, then we could move it down. So what we do now is we want to limit it to one meter because here this position is one meter. It's interesting, interesting for us because we will read the position later to use it for our board. So a, a value or a distance of one meter is very nice for our purposes. So good. So what I do now is I click on the object and we limit the location to the maximum Z value. So you will see when I move it 
up and down, nothing happens because I have not set the maximum value. So when I set it, for example, to 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 meters, so we can move it up to the Z limitation and it's limited to the half distance here and 1.0.5. You can see it if you go to the object information here and the Z position is something about 0.64. The reason for it is because my my center point is not in the in the center so I can uh, look for it. I will show you the origin. Here it is. It should be actually in the center but for any reason it, it's it's not. So well it's maybe it's because of the mouse but believe me this is the location now and oh, no I move it. Anyway it's Believe me, it's at 0.5. So great. I go back to the limit location and what we do now is we set it to 1 because we want to move it to 1. You see? 1. Great. So now we can move it up and down and it stops uh, here and starts just here. So what uh, at the moment happens is when I move it all around, so you see it stops at Z position, but it's moving all around here in the other axis. So to limit this, we go and limit the other axis too. So we say the minimum value of epsilon axis is zero and the maximum two. So what we now see is we can only move it on the X position, but it's not moved in the epsilon axis and it's limit, limited to the Z axis. So now we do the same for the X and for the maximum X. What have what happened? The object moved to zero and, and uh, to the world space zero here because we limited it to this position. So if you want to have the limitation here, you have to put the coordinates of this position. It's very easy, so the position here is 2, and so you see when I move it on the x-axis it stops at 2, but I want to start it at 2, 2. So when I move it now in x, nothing happens, but when I move it up and down, it moves only at the limitation of the z-axis. You see, now everything is frozen, the x-axis and the epsilon axis are not used because this limitations and this is minimum and maximum value for this uh, z-axis is here set by this limit const uh, limit location constraint so great um, all of this happened in the world in the world space so when i move for example this parent my object st stays at the position but i want to move this object together with my parent. To do this, you go to this uh, option here and convert it to local space. So this means as soon as I move it, you see, it begins to move with my object. And the local space is always calculated from the zero from the world space. And, and so when I set it to two, for example, so it will be taken and calculated here into this uh, into this uh, object. So if you, yeah, just to better to, to remind it or to remember it better, if you set it to local space, then every parent can take it with you. And if you are moving it around, it will stay here at this position. So great. This is all you need to know if you parent this or some of these objects that are limited. Uh, location is limited. So this works like this. So I do it again to here for this object too. So again we go to the constraints here, click on this object constraint and we set the limit location constraint and we set the minimum value of zero, the maximum value of one to move it up and down again. Then we set it here from minimum epsilon to maximum epsilon to zero because it have to stay here at the zero position from the side you see it and uh, then uh, maybe i will switch the epsilon and x axis and this one to here so great 
so we can see them. So we see it's here at the position. Great. Um, and then we limit the minimum and maximum of the x-axis. And here it is 2.5. And the same here, 2.5. And now it's limited. And we can move it around. Yes, I forgot something. You know, maybe know I have forgot to set it from world space to local space. And now we can click on the parent and we can move it around. Very nice. Great. So the next is we need to to set, uh, we will set the board amount. So to set the board amount, we go to the board. Here, this is a board and the board have to be duplicated. And the duplication, the, the copies have to be uh, connected with our, here with our board amount slider. So what we do first is we click on the board here and we add a new modifier to it. So the modifier is first an array modifier. So maybe you know already what an array do. The array, this name here or this function is coming from the programming, from programming and an array calculates or duplicates or better contains a lot of objects. Anyway, in our case in Blender, it duplicates an object. So here you see some options. What we see first is we use a fixed count. So we let this mode on and we see and we switch directly to the second option, the count. So you see the count already duplicates our board. Here we see it. It will be duplicated. But what happens? It will be duplicated into the side or on the X axis, on the red one. So when I say free, free copies will be set. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate it to the Z axis. So what I do now is I will change here the relative offset value from one to zero and here this one to one. So what now happens is our board will now be duplicated into the height, into the Z axis. Why is it happening? Because this three values, the this here two, you see them, x epsilon z means x epsilon z. And is this is the offset when a copy is made. So for example, at the moment the offset is one. So when I set, let it so I'll set it to 10, for example, then 10 units will be used to copy this object. You may be asked, what is the one? What does it mean? One is always the overall height, the size of our object. So every copy that is made will be directly positioned uh, to the next or to the previous copy. So for example, when I go to this board here, it's now I go to the edit mode and I move to the polygon. Here I switch back to, uh, to wireframe so you can see it. I've I'm now in the edit mode and when I move it up, you see the board goes up and it will be duplicated in the size it has. Okay. So every time when you, uh, when you uh, uh, modify your object or in the height, for example, then the array will be copy or change the, the size. So great. This is our our offset and the offset here can be changed for example to let's say two this means every second height value of the main object will be set another object we will use this later to change the distance between these elements so great this is the first what we have to do and um, now we want to connect this board to our this to our element here, and now we come to the to the uh, to the thing that is important. We use drivers. So to do this, so I split my screen, and we see here the board, and in the new version here in the new window, I set the mode to animation mode here and the drivers. We see a curve uh, display. And what we now do is we click on the small arrow here or press N and we see here and some information, some properties. At the moment, you see nothing special because this object has no drivers. 
Now, the first what I want to do is I want to, to copy the count, the amount of copies. I want to control this by this element here. So what we do is we go here in the modifier tab on count and click on the right mouse button and add a driver. Then you see here a small window appear, and the same window will be cre uh, will appear when you go to the drivers window here. This is the main window, and you see here uh, in the board object a new some new options appeared, and you see the board has now drivers that control an array, and it controls the count of this array that is found here in our modifiers. So if you want to make more it more clear, you could, for example, rename the array and say array amount, for example, and then you see the name will be displayed here in the list if you have more uh, modifiers that have the same type, like more arrays and so on. So if you don't know it, uh, you can rename your modifiers without any problem. It works always very well. Okay, so we have here the array. And this array now is connected to a driver. You see it because this count is now pink. It changed the color. So the value here, the three, is now controlled by a driver. And the driver can be found here. I clicked here on the tab drivers and see now my information about the driver. So there is a driver, and the driver type is a script expression. The driver value at the moment is free. This value is free because this was the default value, the last value I've used here, and it was uh, used for this uh, default uh, number. So Blender took this number and says the variable that now contains some values is here controlled here and you see there is a small expression a, mathic a mathematical uh, expression variable the value of this variable plus three it's because of this value here so great what we do now is we don't need this three and say return in this case or in the, at this moment you see because the variable has no value at the moment it's here red nothing is read by the driver we see just zero because the value of the variable is zero at the moment. Because it's zero, you see here in the count just one because the array always makes a copy and the minimum is one. Okay, this is our one board. If I type again plus five, so we see five boards and we see a five here. So the driver value is this value here, it's a very nice. Uh, debugging information for your driver if you are doing some expressions here okay so you see the result always here and can check check what is happening so let's go uh, uh, let's uh, continue and see what we do now so what we need is a value for the variable and the value for our variable have to be read and it reads this position of this object so what we do we click on our board again and go here to the red area and we take with the object picker this object. If you like, you can go here on the pull down and you see all your objects in the scene. It's the same like here and you can change, uh, you can uh, select the one you need. In this case, we select the shelf board mount. This is this one here. To see it better, I switch uh, the name on so we can see it in the viewport. To do this, you go here on the Objects tab and say in the viewport display, you can say, I want to see the name and you can click on name and you see the board name here. It's board amount. I hope you can see it. The same we do here for this one. And we say here we want to see the name too. It's a shelf distance, you know, shelf board amount, shelf distance. This will be later for our distance. Very nice, good. I go back to the board. Now we have a position and we have a position. We have the position of this object here placed into our variable. Which position and what we see as a result is a seven. Why we see a seven? Because 
the position here is 2, and it's added with or calculated with 5, and the result is 7. Where the 2 comes from? The 2 comes from our object position. It's here. Location x is 2 meters. 2 is the value. So why this? Why is this here in the variable? Because our object takes a type of uh, we we take an x location value from the world space. Its value the value is two at the moment, and we write it into the variable in this variable. Of course, you can change the variable name if you like, but you should do it here and here to to. Uh, create a relationship between them. So what we want to do is we don't want to read the x axis position. We want to read the location in the z axis. Now we see the location is 0 and this value will be taken here into the variable and the 5 is added to this. Uh, this is just an example. We will change it later. So when I move this one for example, let's say to, to the half, let's say I would change it now to 0.5 and go back to our board. Then we see we have now the current position of our object 0.5 in the Z location axis of our world space. You can use the local space too if you want and the transform space, but we will need just a world space at the moment. But let me see what happened. I hope it will not change. Uh, it changed, so okay. We have to change it to the local space because we have seen it when I move the parent, the world space of this object changes too. So I change it to local space. It's 0.5. Great, so I move it now back. Uh, now move it. You see it's a parent and the 0.5 stay because of local space. Okay, this is what we do. Great, I go back to the board and we understand the Z location of our local space is 0.5 and is written into our variable and the variable is placed here. Here you see a mode, um, here we have different elements we can read, we can use a distance and so on, but we use a transform channel here for this this time. Okay, so what we do now is we don't want to use uh, plus 5, we leave it like it is, variable 1. So when I move it now up and down, nothing happens because 1 is placed here into our array and one object is not much, so what we do now, we want to place 10 of them between in this distance so you have uh, you know when I move it from 0 to 1 this object then this value is going from 0 to 1 but we want 10 of them so what we do is we use 1 multiplication with 10 and now we see because we are multiplicating this value we get a 10 and the 10 value is placed here so as soon as I move it down, you see my board grows up or down, okay? So here, for example, at the moment, variable uh, multiplicated with 10 is 4.89, and our array round it, yeah, always down, and takes the, the value where that is used here in the first uh, at the first position 4 and take it to this, okay? So we see a 4 amount of 4 elements duplicated. Great, this is fantastic and works already. Good. So the next will be if we want to control the distance between the boards. So we do the same and um, this time we go and add a driver to our distance. To use, to use this, we go here on the 1, press the right mouse button and say Add Driver. Now we have a second, you see, a second driver added, this on here, and you see this is the relative offset 
of our array. This is here the relative offset, and here the array. Okay, dokey. So we see here the same uh, because this value was one. Um, Blender already taken the, the one and added it to here to our variable, but we don't want to have one. We just want to use the value. And what we do now is again the same like before. We need the object. So here you see is a sh distance. So this time we don't use the object picker. We use this list and sh distance is here. And we take the z location for our value. And again, in the local space, because we want to move the object here and we don't want to change the value. So when I move now our object, then it happens nothing. Why? Because you see, the, um, the value is zero here. Why is it zero? I must take a look. Wait a second. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Distance. What am I doing wrong? Invalid Python expression. Why is it invalid? It's the right value. Ah, okay. All is right. I have to click just here in. Ah, I think Blender needed just a small, small update to do this. So you see it works. We have now the one, and when I move it down, so you see at the left side, the distance of our copy is changing now. Okay, here is the half distance, so we see just 0.5, and this is a full distance. So two, so this is our main two informations that we need first. So what I can do now, I can change the amount of objects, and I can change the distance. But we see our distance at the value of 1 is not enough. So we go to the board and say we want a distance that is wider. So what we have at the moment is 1. Okay? So we don't want to have a distance of 1. We want a higher distance. So what about 10? So we could say it's plus 10. So we now have a distance that is 0 plus 10 and when I move it down or up this happened this is but this is not the right what we want because 0 plus 10 is 10 and if we use 0 plus or, uh, 10 or this value plus 10 then it's 11 because we are at the position of 1 so what we do now we are multiplicating with 10 okay so what now happens is the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 10, you see? In this case, 10 centimeters. Okay? So, great. Is this 10 centimeters? I don't know. It's a multiplication of this. So, anyway, we see this is the maximum distance here. And if you want, you can ch uh, to make it or you can set it to 100. And you see, now we have 100. Ah, now I understand. It's uh, the double. So 100 is the value of 2 meters. Okay, when I would move it to 50, let's say 50, then we have, we have, the value would be 1 meter, the distance here. So I think the reason is uh, because the, the calculation is... Uh, using the center of our object you know it's like a radius the radius will be used and the radius the half radius is uh, uh, one meter anyway 50 is good 50 is our maximum value for the distance between the boards so what we have now we have four boards and and this distance you see i now move the, the amount and the boards will be created when I click on the second one, I can change the distance. Great. We will continue now with with the height of our of our wall here, and I will explain you what you have to do. So, what we want to do, we we want to to change the height of the walls related to the distance of our board. So the value of the board or the wall height needs always be the same like the distance here. 
So first we need something to help us extrude or change the wall height. In our example here, I use a helper object. And this helper is here. It's uh, not very well seen, so I uh, show it to you just by viewport display. Where is it? I hope I can click on it. Yeah, it's my, our wall size position. Here's this one. And I look for in front, right? Here in front, you click on the viewport display for our zero for our for our empty and you say in front this is the same like x-ray in the old version of blender well good what is it here this is uh, just an empty an empty object that i'm using here you see it i gave it a name a wall size position because it defines the wall size our wall size of the shelf wall great so what this object does it will pull some vertices to make our walls longer to make them bigger so what we do is we go into the edit mode we switch to uh, to uh, here to faces you see them to faces click this face uh, wait here click this face and this face you see it's the upper the tops face of our walls we click them and we must store this why we want to store this because uh, because we will do the following we will pull them up pulling them up it means we press and pull them and pull them up to this position here okay but we need something automatical to do this and to do this, we need uh, we we are using a trick. We will use a hook modifier, and our empty here is the hook. So what we have to do first? Okay, we have to store first the polygons that have to be hooked, that have to be pulled. So what we do? We go here. We use uh, this both faces. Yeah, we selected the faces, and we go now to this object here, to the object data. And there we see vertex groups. And with vertex groups, you are able to store the selected vertices. So first we click here on a new vertex group. And we say, we, this is a hook group. Okay. And unfortunately, the selected elements are not automatically stored into the hook group. Before they have to be stored, you uh, to store them, you, you go here to assign. Now they are stored. To control this, you press A, disable all what you have, deselect all, and then press on select, and you see both faces are selected. Okay, deselect, select, and all is working fine. We see the top faces are here now stored into this hook group. Wonderful. So the half work is done. Now we have to tell um, Blender that this object is a hook and have to pull this group up. So to do this, we select the wall object and then we go to the modifier tab and then we choose the hook modifier in the deform panel. Here it is. So we take the hook and the hook is red because there is no information what object have to be used for our hook and um, what what have to be chosen so what we do is now we define the hook and the hook is here our our object here not the board i use it here by using this wall size position this is this one i click on it here again and we blend we show the name here so you see it wall size position i hope you see it so wireframe here, wall size position. This is our empty. And we told our walls to use the wall size position empty to hook the walls. So nothing happened at the moment, but it will happen when we define the vertex group. Blender knows the vertex group list and uh, will show it to you here. So we have the hook group and now the hook knows 
it have to use the vertexes here in the group. So when I move it up, you see, it moves when I move the wall size empty up or anywhere. Great. So the next step is to connect this empty here, this hook, with our distance object. To do this, we have to control the position of our hook. So as soon as this object is at 1, our hook has to be at, at 1. So we do the same. We use like uh, we do the same like before. We use driver and connect the position of this object with the position of this object of our empty. To use this, we go here in the empty to our to our object position. This is our empty. At the moment, it's at zero, and you see it moves up and down when I change these values here in the z-axis. So now I click on the set location axis here and right mouse button and say add driver. This time the driver will be connected with the distance value here with this with this object. So I click here on that location, I move to drivers already happened and this is the default value before zero we can delete it. And um, now we go and say we want to control the z-axis and the local space of our shelf distance. Okay, now I can click on the slider here and when I change the slider, the height of the walls changes too. So what we have now to do is we must set the same amount of walls like the amount of boards. So we have here two boards, here the first one, the second one, and we need two walls. So we go to the wall and add another array modifier here, and we change the order. The array have to be created first and then the hook have to work it's important because instead you in uh, you would see the wrong the wrong position here for the wall so we set the array the first in the stack and start to connect it with our um, drivers again we set the x value to zero for the offset and the z to one we can all of course we can leave it zero but anyway so and now we connect the count by using a driver clicking on the driver i do it every time and delete our uh, value here and now i choose my my um, distance here uh, no the amount sorry the amount because we want the amount here and now we set the z location and the local space and as we see, the walls happen nothing because why happens nothing? Because the distance is not high enough. So the walls are still here, but they are copied at the same position. So what we must do is we must set the proper distance for it. So here we go to this. Uh, wall object and add a driver for this distance here for this one and add a driver and again go to the relative offset this time we take this distance here the x location and the local space and now we can change the distance and we can change the amount so the distance is very low very small so we have to go here and we must change for the distance another value of a multiplicator factor of let's say 50 and when i say set it to 50 and change it and duplicate it down then it should work but it's not working why is it not working and because there is only one amount ah i see okay the count of our boards of our walls have to be the same like the amount of our boards here we see uh, the variable um, uh, multiplicated with 10. This is what I forgot. You have, all, of course, you have the same amount of volts, so you have to multiplicate it to 10. And now it works, and we have the right amount of volts, and we can set the distance. But what we see, 
it's not completely ready because there is something missing the top the top board this is very easy you just go to the last or to the boards and say you don't want to have the amount of boards here the 10 boards maximum you want one more plus one in this case always one board more will be created so you see when i change the amount then the boards start to create as a special position here okay and then you see all is working and you can change the dis distance if you want and all is fine great so i hope you liked my my small tutorial here and you now know how to create this nice interactive shelf here great so okay this small quick tip video was not this quick tip as i planned to have it but i hope you liked it anyway and i would be happy if you subscribe my youtube channel or visit me at my gumroad shop or at my website to support me to create much more of these videos in the future thank you very much and have a nice day bye bye